Industrial gases, such as carbon dioxide, can cause serious injury or death if not properly handled. You should only handle industrial gases or operate industrial gas equipment if you are a trained professional. Messer Americas makes no warranty or representation as to the suitability of the information provided in this program for any particular purpose. You, the viewer, rely on this information at your sole discretion and risk. The information provided in this program may not apply to all situations and is not intended to replace an industrial gases safety training program. You should always follow your employer's safety policies and procedures. This program instructs the viewer to call or contact Messer under certain circumstances. If you work with industrial gases and equipment that is not supplied by Messer, it is important that you contact your industrial gases supplier if you have an emergency or require support. Welcome to the Taking the Lead in Safety series from Messer Group, a world leader in industrial gases and engineering. In this program, we'll take a look at the safety guidelines for working with solid, liquid, and gaseous carbon dioxide, commonly referred to as CO2. We'll cover the basic properties and behavior of carbon dioxide, how it's piped and stored for use. And we'll also examine the safety concerns associated with oxygen deficiency and low temperature burns. When used in large amounts, Carbon dioxide is always stored as a liquid under high pressure. This is more practical than shipping small cylinders of compressed gas because liquefied CO2 takes up a lot less space. There are two types of tanks used for storing liquefied CO2, refrigerated and vacuum jacketed. Refrigerated tanks require electrical service, refrigerant lines, and a compressor, much like a large freezer. Vacuum tanks are similar in design to thermos bottles, super-insulated containers used for storing low-temperature liquids. It's important to know how to stop the flow of product from the tank in case of emergency. Each CO2 tank has a main isolation valve that can be closed in the event of an emergency to stop the flow of CO2. By turning the main isolation valve to the closed position, any leak or other product-related emergency can be controlled. Any continuous discharge of product, either solid or vapor, indicates an abnormal condition. If any problem is suspected with the tank or tank piping systems, contact Messer at the phone number posted on the tank. Liquid CO2 flowing from the tank is extremely cold. Ice accumulation on the piping is due to moisture from the atmosphere freezing on the cold surface of the piping. It's important not to touch any cold surfaces around the tank or you could receive a cold burn or your skin could stick to the pipe itself. Always keep the tank area clear of materials, cars and other vehicles. Backing in a liquefied gas delivery tanker takes a lot of room. So be sure and maintain a wide, clear path at all times from the road to the tank. CO2 piping systems are just as important as the storage tank. So be sure to protect them from potential damage. Keep forklifts, trucks, and other heavy equipment well away from all system components containing carbon dioxide, liquid, or gas. Liquefied CO2 piping systems can be made from a number of materials, including stainless steel, brass, or type K copper. But all brazed joints must use cadmium-free solder that's at least 56% silver. For both safety and efficiency, pipes carrying liquefied CO2 must be insulated. Typically, a 2-inch diameter copper pipe will require a 3-inch thickness of polyfoam insulation. Another option is vacuum-jacketed stainless steel. But pipes carrying CO2 gas aren't that cold and don't require insulation. If you need to replace or add piping carrying liquefied CO2, have a qualified engineer review the design, the choice of material, and the pressure ratings for all system components. And CO2 piping must be labeled indicating its contents according to the labeling standards specified for your site. It's important that liquefied CO2 never be trapped within the container or a section of pipe without proper safety relief devices installed. These devices must always be present to vent gas when the pressure builds up. Here's why. Imagine boiling water in a pot with the lid clamped on. What would happen? The water boils, steam pressure builds up, 
and before long, you've got a very hazardous situation. If liquefied CO2 is trapped in a container or a pipe with no venting, you've got the same situation. Even though it's very cold, liquefied CO2 is actually boiling as it evaporates. This can build up tremendous pressure, enough to cause piping to rupture. Safety relief devices must be installed in all piping and storage systems, anywhere that liquefied CO2 might become trapped. Liquefied CO2 is very cold. In the tanks and piping system, it's at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Be sure you never touch any bare metal parts with unprotected skin. Your skin would freeze right to the metal and tear if you tried to pull loose. You may also work with CO2 in a solid form, sometimes called dry ice. This is even colder, 109 degrees below zero. Dry ice has the potential to cause serious low temperature burns. Gaseous CO2 is odorless. The vapor you sometimes see where carbon dioxide is being delivered or stored is misleading. That's just water vapor condensing in the surrounding air. Once CO2 gas has reached normal air temperature, it's completely invisible. The temperature of the CO2 gas can vary a lot depending on how it's created or vaporized. It can range in temperature from 109 degrees below zero Fahrenheit up to ambient temperature and above. And remember, CO2 gas does not need to be visible to be a hazard. Let's talk further about the risk of the low temperature burns. If your skin comes into direct contact with liquid or solid CO2, you can suffer frostbite. Contact of even a few seconds can be very painful. But even without the pain, this type of injury can be recognized by the yellow, waxy appearance of the frozen tissues. If you get a low temperature burn, don't rub the frozen area and don't try to warm it with dry heat. Instead, put the affected area under lukewarm, never hot water and remove any restrictive clothing. The best way to avoid low temperature injuries with CO2 is to always wear protective clothing whenever handling it in any form. Workers should wear long sleeved shirt and pants of 100% cotton, eye and face protection, safety-toed boots, and loose-fitting insulated gloves. People die from exposure to CO2 gas every year. Carbon dioxide presents a very serious risk for two reasons. First, as CO2 gas builds up in the air, it displaces everything else, so the percentage of oxygen drops. At very low oxygen levels, you don't have time to know what's happening. With just a few breaths, you can become unconscious. And second, in concentrations above the OSHA permissible exposure limit of 5,000 parts per million, or one half of 1% in the air, symptoms such as headache, dizziness, and increased heart rate and blood pressure can occur. For example, when it's used for bulk chilling or freezing, the CO2 gradually evaporates, releasing the gas into the air. The gas can also be released when residue of CO2 snow on frozen products evaporates. Both of these situations can be extremely dangerous because they can cause toxic amounts of gas to build up very gradually and deplete the amount of oxygen in the air without any warning. CO2 is heavier than air. When it's released into a room or a confined area with poor ventilation, it tends to lie along the floor or ground and settle into any low-lying spaces. Fans, machinery, and even people moving around will have an effect on the air currents in a particular space. Because it's invisible, CO2 can build up in these spaces without anyone realizing it, creating a potentially lethal situation for anyone entering the area. It's critical to identify the areas presenting the greatest risk of oxygen deficiency from CO2. Warning signs should be posted where there's the potential for high concentrations of CO2 or oxygen deficiency. Ventilation systems must be in operation and maintained in good working order. Installed atmospheric air monitoring should be in place that triggers an alarm if the amount of CO2 in the air becomes too high or if the oxygen level in the air falls below 19.5%.
All employees who work in the area should be trained to recognize the hazards of CO2 and to properly respond if there's an alarm or an emergency. CO2 is used safely in industrial environments every day, but it can be dangerous. Don't assume you'll be able to see it. CO2 gas can be completely invisible. The best protection is an awareness of the risks and taking the proper precautions. If it's suspected that there is an oxygen deficient atmosphere, do not enter the area, even if someone has blacked out. Instead, get help from people properly trained on entering environments where asphyxiation hazards may be present. All affected employees should be trained on the safety data sheet for carbon dioxide. Safety data sheets are available from Messer and they provide important safety information including the hazards of the product, first aid and accidental release measures, personal protective equipment as well as proper procedures for handling and storage. Let's review the key points of carbon dioxide, CO2. For most industrial applications, CO2 is stored as a liquid under high pressure in a refrigerated tank or vacuum jacketed tank. The temperature of liquefied CO2 is about 0 degrees Fahrenheit, while solid CO2 is 109 degrees below zero. These temperatures create a serious risk of low temperature burns, so always handle CO2 wearing appropriate protective clothing. CO2 is heavier than air, so it tends to collect along the floor and settle in low-lying areas. Facilities using CO2 in any form should always be equipped with exhaust ventilation systems and ambient air monitoring. CO2 presents a significant risk of asphyxiation because it displaces oxygen and can paralyze the respiratory system. If you suspect an unsafe CO2 buildup in a particular area, do not enter. Notify the appropriate safety personnel and keep other people away. Industrial gases such as carbon dioxide play a critical role in manufacturing, food processing, healthcare, and literally thousands of other applications. Understanding their properties and their behaviors, as well as employing best practice handling procedures, ensures a safer workplace whenever they are present. For more information on industrial gases, such as carbon dioxide, or to obtain safety data sheets for any industrial gas, visit our website at www.messer-us.com. Thanks for watching, and have a safe day.